and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to continue our discussion about trigonometric functions and talk about reference angles. Okay, well we've talked about the relationship of the sides in a right triangle and how they define a particular trig function. So for example, sine is going to be the opposite value over a uh, right triangle, opposite side of a right triangle uh, over the hypotenuse. So if I have a right triangle and my angle in question is this angle, then I know the opposite side is here and the hypotenuse is here. So the relationship of sine based on the angle that's in question is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. In the case of cosine, it's going to be the adjacent side the side adjacent to the angle in question over the hypotenuse. And in tangent, it's going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now we're going to change the way a little bit that we think about um, the relationships of the sides and how we create um, that equation or that relationship as a fraction. So we're going to take a look at it uh, in terms of the angle being part of a circle. And perhaps you can think about it as though the terminal side is the hand of a clock which is rotating either in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Either way, as that hand rotates, it's going the tip of that hand is always going to be on the outside of the circle. So in this case, the hand really becomes the hypotenuse of a triangle. And trigonometry really becomes just a, an extension of the Pythagorean theorem. So if I were to draw this uh, line here and to create my right triangle, I have my hypotenuse, I have two legs. Now my hypotenuse is always going to be the radius. So that terminal size that rotates through is always going to be the radius. That hypotenuse is always going to be uh, that same value. So I can say then, and then also my legs are going to be either the y coordinate, or the vertical component, so this is the y, um, or the x component, which is the horizontal distance. So as I rotate my arm through, the y value and the x value will change, but relative to their placement on the xy coordinate plane, um, I'll always have the x value or the y value at some point that's along the circle. And again, with the hypotenuse equaling the radius. So what I'm really creating is a circle um, that helps me to define the relationship between the sides and the hypotenuse. So if I look at this more closely, I can see that <clears throat> if I were to bring into question some angle here that's in relationship to the vertex, uh, then really what I'm talking about for a sine is the opposite side or the y distance to that point on the circle over the hypotenuse, which we're going to call r. If I'm talking about cosine, I'm just talking about the x distance here, this leg, over the hypotenuse or the radius. And if I'm talking about tangent, I'm just talking about the y component over the x component. So for sine now, we can really change the function to y over x, where it was previously opposite over hypotenuse. And really, we're not changing it, we're just modifying it based on the organization of the circle and the way that the triangles are laid out as you rotate the terminal side around the circle. Cosine will just be adjacent still over hypotenuse or the x over uh, the r value and then tangent will just be the opposite over the adjacent. And we can extend this again to the other three trig functions the reciprocal of sine is uh, going to be cosecant. Cosecant of theta is r over y. Secant of theta is r over x. And then cotangent, x over y. So now we're going to talk about what's called a unit circle. We've, we've talked about creating a circle and using the Pythagorean theorem to define the triangles as we rotate that terminal side or that hand of the clock around the circle. And now we're going to uh, create a unit circle. And what the unit circle is, it's just saying that the radius of the circle is going to be equal to 1. So if I were to write an equation for this particular circle, it would be x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And that's the form of a circle in standard position with its center at the origin, which is the case here, 
with a radius of 1. The next topic that we need to learn is part of the process of uh, understanding a trig function of any angle is what's called a reference angle. And a reference angle is just that acute angle, which means it's less than 90 degrees, that's formed by the terminal side of the angle in question, so this terminal side here, and the x-axis. So remember, terminal side and x-axis, and it's also acute. So, for example, if my angle theta is 150 degrees, then my reference angle then is going to be 30 degrees. The unique thing about a reference angle is that the reference angle, in terms of its absolute value, is always the same as the angle in question. So, for example, if I were to say that the angle theta is 150 degrees, and I take the sine of 150 degrees, then I get a value of 0.5. I know my reference angle is going to be that angle formed by the terminal side and the x-axis, and that angle is going to be 30 degrees. So if you take the sine of 30 degrees, you'll find that the sine of 30 degrees is also going to be 0.5. So the absolute value of any angle and its reference angle are always going to be the same. And it's important to know these reference angles as you talk about and measure angles <coughs> that are larger than 90 degrees, especially in relationship to the unit circle. The only requirement in working with the reference angles and the extra step that you need to take is that you need to ensure that the sine of whatever the reference angle is is the same sine as the angle that's in question. And we'll learn more about this in chapter 13.4. But let me just give you a format to understand the values of sine, cosine, uh, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So remember that we have four quadrants in the xy coordinate plane. Quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. Remember that we discussed at the beginning of this lesson that the x value is related to the cosine value and the y value is related to the sine value or the cosecant value. So when we think about what the values of sine are in the different quadrants, we think about, and by the way, r, the r value is always going to be equal to 1. When we think about sine, we think about the relationship of y over r. So sine then, if r is always positive, sine is going to be positive in the first and second quadrant because y is positive in the first and second quadrant. When we think about cosine, we think about x over r. And again, as r is always positive, we know that x will be positive in now the first and the fourth quadrant, but will be negative in the second and the third quadrant. And finally, tangent is going to be uh, positive when x and y are positive or when x and y are negative. So I just want you to keep that in the back of your head as we continue to use yeah, the unit circle and also to use reference angles to find the measure of any particular angle. So if you lay this out, you'll see that all of the trig functions are going to be positive in the first quadrant. That sine and cosecant will be positive in the second quadrant. That tangent and cotangent will be positive uh, in the third quadrant. And that cosine and secant will be positive in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so let's use uh, our concept of reference angles to help us find the value of a trig uh, function for any angle. So we take in question the angle of 120 degrees. So the first thing you need to do, since you don't know off the top of your head, most likely, what the angle measure is of, uh, or I'm sorry, what the uh, sine, cosine, or tangent is of 120 degrees. But you do know what the sine, cosine, and tangent are for 60 degrees because that's a special family of right triangles. What we're going to do is we're going to use what we know about reference angles to determine uh, the trig functions of a smaller angle or our reference angle. So the angle in question is 120 degrees. We figure out that our reference angle is going to be 60 degrees. So we set up our, uh, our triangle, 30, 60, 90 triangle. In this case, uh, we have a 60 degree angle. So we know the side that's opposite the 60 degree angle is going to be uh, root 3, let's say, and this is going to be 1. And then the side that's the hypotenuse is twice the value 
of the side that's opposite <coughs> the 30 degree angle. So in sine, I can see that my relationship is going to be uh, root 3 over 2. So sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. And the first thing that we've done is to find the reference angle, then to find the value of the reference angle. And the last step is to find the sign, S-I-G-N, of that, uh, that uh, the value for sine of 60 degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look back at our quadrant analysis where we see the values of x and y. And we see that in quadrant 2, y is going to be positive. So sine also is going to be positive. So in this case, sine of 60 degrees is going to be positive, of course. But sine of 120, because it's in the second quadrant, will also be positive. So my answer will be root 3 over 2. The last thing we need to talk about are quadrantal angles. And simply, quadrantal angles are just angles who are in standard position whose terminal side lies on the x or y axis. So the measure of a quadrantal angle is always going to be a multiple of 90 degrees or pi halves radians. So I have 90 degrees here, 100 degrees here are pi radians. I have 270 degrees here are 3 uh, pi halves radians, or 360 degrees, 2 pi radians. So again, a quadrantal angle is just an angle in standard position whose terminal side lies on the x or y axis.